pleasure is the bed rock of a happy and sweet marriage. In a marriage that enjoys a good understanding of ideas, good understanding of expression between the man and the woman, it goes a long way to express the kind of marriage that Jesus Christ imagined that we believers should engage. No wonder, Bible speaking in the book of Ephesians chapter 4 verse 29, say, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, whether you are a man or whether you are a woman, a woman but that which is good to the use of a divine and that it may minister grace to others. Let your word as a man, as a woman, minister grace to your spouse. Not dirty words. Not anyhow words. Because the word that you use is more painful than pain that if you even use against the person. It lingers in the heart of your spouse or the hearer. That is why Jesus Christ, he exemplified Christian marriage to be a unique kind of marriage that is different from any kind of marriage you can observe in the world. And why are Christian marriage different from any kind of marriage that you can see anywhere? Number one of them is that it is a covenant. A covenant is an agreement between two or more, I mean between two parties. We are talking about marriage. Not two or more. It is based on what based on where the five plans are proposed. And it is sealed with an oath. So priest Mary is a covenant. As a covenant, you must abide by the rule of the covenant. If you don't want to be wounded. If you don't want to be wounded, you must respect that covenant that you make so that you don't digress from the lay down procedure, which is you must stick to your wife. You must love your wife. You must not push her away. You must love her as you love yourself. You must give her the kind of warmth and the kind of support that she ever needed. Number two, is that it is a lifetime relationship. You cannot say, I am tired of this man, therefore I want to back out. There is no backing out in marriage. You cannot walk out of marriage because of uh, irreconcilable differences. Because there is differences between you and your wife. And say, I want to walk out of it. No. You must stay. Number three. Is that it has sufficient support. Please say marriage has sufficient support. What are the support? The support are the uh, service group you belong to in church. They are watching your marriage. Not only watching. They are gathering to help you to pray whenever they will want to raise his ugly head against your marriage. They gather and say, let us join her. Let us pray for Brother John. Let us pray for Sister Viv Vivian. She is not looking good these days. It's like she's depressed. It's like she's passing through certain things in the marriage. That is why we must observe these golden rules as well. I want to mention. This golden rule goes a long way to bind man and woman together. Number one of this golden rule is Matthew chapter 7 verse 12. It says, therefore, whatsoever you want others to do for you, do also for others. This is the golden rule of Christian marriage. Matthew chapter 7 and verse 12. Whatsoever you want others to do for you, do also for others. Number two of this golden rule is prayer. First Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 17 saying, Pray continually. So it is not to say that family that prays together, they live together. Because you need prayer to be able to dispel the forces of hell, to be able to break powers of darkness that is against the unity. That is against the unity of that marriage. So prayer for Christian, they are, I mean, prayerful family. They are family that live together and that are able to surmount all level obstacles of mountain that confront them. Number three of this golden rule we have to take is the practice of forgiveness. Practice of forgiveness. Forgiveness. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 32. It says, 
be kind and compassionate one to another, forgiving each other just as Christ has also forgiven you. So it is hard for you to enjoy smooth communication when you did not forgive your spouse. It is hard to enjoy a, a, a smooth and loving communication when you remember what your husband or your wife did about three or four days ago and you remind him and the man of your spouse will spoil that's it. So you mean you are still keeping this type of grudges against me since all this right you have not forgiven me. So forgiveness is very vital and also number four is be a listener. As a husband, you must pay attention. That is a sign of respect for your wife. To listen, to listen to her, let her learn before you draw your conclusion. Inability for you to listen carefully. The Bible let us understand this. We must be uh, quick to hear it than able to speak. Your speaking does not have enough weight as much as your ability to listen. Any kind of leader that is called an innovative leader must be a leader that has a good listening ear. That has a good listening ear. So your listening capacity, it shows that you are mature. It shows that you are intelligent. Anyone that says, no, 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 no. I cannot take it. I cannot take it. It's because the person lacks understanding. The difference between a winning person and a failing person is understanding. Understanding comes when there is a, when, when there is adequate consumption of words. When you listen to the word and you meditate through the word of God that is stored inside you, then you are able to know the area where the solution lies. You are able to know the area where the solution lies. Number five is that be one another's keeper and bear each other's body. You must be a keeper to your wife, to your husband. He is your next of kin. He is your number one and the closest person. So you cannot say your wife make mistake or your husband make mistake and you begin to laugh at him. And you begin to love him to scorn. Or you begin to explain him to your family member. Or you begin to explain him to your friends and say, Look at this man, this man is stupid. And he's your husband. Or he's your wife. It must be that if your wife transgresses, or your husband transgresses, or, or falls, or whatsoever, you must be the one to cover the nakedness. You must be the one to cover the nakedness because whatsoever, don't think that anyone that is insulting your wife is not insulting you. Someone that says your wife is a very foolish woman. You, you are the husband of foolish woman. That means your own foolishness is, is even multiplied state. It's even multiplied state. So that is why we must be able to be to be keeper and bearer of body of our wife, of our 